On this week's episode of the Build Show Network, I want to talk about the importance of proper temporary heating for a new construction site. Hey guys, Wade Paquin with the Build Show Network. Now, in my years as a builder, I've made the mistake of using temporary heating sources for our new home constructions that um, weren't the best application, right? We've ran the HVAC system that was meant for the homeowner, um, and in doing that, even when you put filtration on some of the return ducts, it's gonna cake up the uh, blades on the fan, um, it's gonna get the ducts dirty, you're gonna have to clean the ducts. It's just something you don't want to get into. Um, we've also run temporary propane heaters, bullet heaters, and heating sources of that type. Um, the problem with those types of heating sources is that they actually add a lot of moisture into the home. So here in the Northeast, we do a lot of plaster um, on our blue board, and that is a process that adds moisture into the home itself when the plaster is drying. And when you're trying to um, heat the home at that stage, you've got your moisture coming off the plaster and you've got bullet heaters that are from a propane source. You're actually not helping the environment in the home. You're actually adding more moisture to the house. So what we've decided to do is to ramp up our game here and go with the Ferrari of temporary heating units. And that's this rooftop package unit. It's a five ton unit that we have rigged on a trailer that we can bring this from job to job. We can move it around the job site if needed. And it is a great system. So it's a simple five by eight landscape trailer that fit very nicely to the specifications and the dimensions of our package unit here. We installed some angle iron that was bolted to the frame of the trailer and then welded that to the bottom of the package unit. So this thing isn't going anywhere. You can see we've got our propane line and our electrical connected here. This is all mobile, so it makes it very easy to move it around the site or to just disconnect it, roll everything up, and bring it to another site. You can see over here we've got our supply and return right into a couple of the window sashes, um, and so it makes this a very effective use um, of a heating source for this time of year here in the winter, and it is right now it's about 15 degrees outside. So I'm going to bring in Lou, my HVAC guy, who can explain how the system works. Good Lou, morning, how are you doing? How are you? Good morning. Good to see you. Why don't we um, explain to the audience how this heats and cools? Okay. Well, essentially, this is your basic package gas-fired rooftop, package gas electric rooftop unit. Uh, we, we've converted this natural gas unit to propane because uh, you're using the bottled gas. The electric comes in over here. We're, currently, we have a 20 amp feed on for the electric because we're only running heat at this time of the year. All right. So that's just powering the fan right now. Essentially, we're just powering the fan and the control circuit at mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. um, this is a 208, 230 volt single phase unit, which is most common uh, you know, for residents, a single phase. So that's why we chose this. So we've basically maximized our tonnage without increasing the uh, electrical requirements for a yes. unit like this. This is a five ton unit which is the largest single phase unit we could get, right. which you know, we, we figured to do, be able to do up to a 3,500 square foot home with temporary heating and cooling. Right, right. So in the cooling phase, which we'll be getting into in about a couple months here as we get into spring and early summer months, um, this has basically a condenser in there that will have to provide, I think, a 60 amp power source for that condenser to run. So explain to us how that will work. Yes, yeah, so in the, in the summertime when we're gonna run the cooling, you, we will need to upgrade the service to 60 amps for the full unit to operate in cooling. You'll have your, your air hand, indoor you have an evaporator motor that moves the air from the supply and the return, passes it across the evaporator coil, then through the condensing unit into the compressor and the condensing unit to spell the heat. Now how efficient is this unit? This was a, a 16 sear package gas electric. Mm -hmm. So Lou, in the past when I've made the mistake of using the HVAC system in the house, and even though we've tried to put filters on the uh, return grills and so forth um, to stop the dust from getting into the equipment and so forth, that's still the application here, right? We still, it's an active construction site. We've got dust inside. This has a return on it. So what are we doing to filter that dust? So inside we have pleated filters attached over the window where the return flex duct ties in. Mm -hmm. And then we also have pleated filters inside the unit. So we're trying to double filter the, the air. The filter inside, we're changing much more regularly, mostly on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And then the filters out in the unit, we're changing weekly 
to maintain the coils and keep everything clean. Right. The, the benefit of using this is we're not introducing any dust to the homeowner system that's being installed. Right, and that's the key here is to look out for the client's investment in their heating system and cooling system and to make sure that we're providing and turning over a house to them that's going to provide very good air quality. Absolutely. Right? We don't, even when we've used the heating systems in the house in the past and we've, we've you know, cleaned the fan blades or we've replaced them or cleaned the ducts, it's still not 100% clean at that point. It, it so. is difficult and uh, during construction, um, so we generally don't recommend that you run the systems sure. because of the amount of cleaning that's required, where this being a temporary unit on a trailer that we're going to move from site to site could very easily be taken to the shop, cleaned out, hosed down, and we, it didn't affect the homeowner's right. quality of air. Exactly. Let's go inside and take a look at the return and the supply inside, but particularly the supply and how we're distributing the air inside the house. Sounds good. Let's go. All right, guys, so we're talking about outside the supply and return. So Lou fabricated this box here for us. So we've got two supply ducts coming out of it. We've run this one onto the first floor and this one down to the basement. Now, I know this isn't an ideal situation here on the stairwell. We are in the process of installing hardwood floors right now. This was a good spot to put the uh, ducts coming into the house right now. It's kind of out of the way of the flooring crew. So when they're here, um, we lift these up and tie them up. But again, Two supply ducts right now, basement, first floor, nothing going on to the second floor. Heat does rise, so we found that by distributing air to the first floor and the basement, and by having a bunch of oscillating fans, we've got about six oscillating fans on the project right now, that is circulating and distributing the air, so we've got consistent temperature around the house. Now on this window on the bottom sash, we've removed that, and that is the uh, return for the unit. We put a filter right in the window. We're changing that every day or so um, to keep the uh, dust under control here. So, um, like I said, this is kind of the Ferrari of temporary heating systems. If you guys are interested in learning more about this, um, feel free to shoot me an email. Happy to answer any questions. Or if you're in the uh, southern New England area or Rhode Island area um, and you want to come by and look at this, learn more about it, um, purchase one from us, um, we can help you out. My email is just Wade at wkpconstruction.com. Otherwise, I hope you guys invest in a system like this. If you're builders out there, um, it really is beneficial to your project. So hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you soon right here on the Build Show Network.